the last category we're gonna go over is the separate water heater storage tank. I don't know how else to say it. Some people call it like a boiler with a tank because it really does look like a boiler. Um, but separate heater, separate tank, you have the largest selection of equipment sizes possible. Without a doubt, this is gonna be your broadest spectrum, okay? We can do from very little BTU to high storage and everything in between. Everything from atmospherically fired, right? Just using room air, natural gravity vent, uh, copper fin to high efficiency stainless steel, whatever you want, sky's the limit. And the most diverse in meeting application requirements. Okay, again, do we need a little bit, you know, a huge dump load, right? Where a little BTU is fine because I have several hours to make it up. I just have this one big draw or more continuous, whatever we need to do. <clears throat> if we look at the pictures on the left, the other thing it does is, um, on the lines of diversity, is we can look at it all kinds of different ways. We can have a single heater, single tank. Easy peasy. If we want some redundancy on the heater because there is absolutely more mechanical components and, and potential um, for issues or service, whatever you want to call it, on the actual heater, maybe I want to do two heaters in a single tank because tanks don't typically fail, especially unfired tanks, right? Unfired tanks tend to last a very, very long time, okay? Well, maybe... I don't know, I just have some concerns. I want redundancy all around. Okay, no problem. We'll do two heaters, two tanks. No big deal, easy peasy, okay? We can do any type of configuration any way we want with a separate heater, separate tank. It also, without a doubt, offers the most diversity and efficiency. So if efficiency is the name of the game or the target or whatever you wanna call it, this, without a doubt, offers the most variety. We can do everything from 81 to 82. Um, you know, you can get into, you know, the horizontals at 85. You can do the verticals that are still made out of copper, um, you know, non-condensing, but, you know, hitting that threshold of condensing efficiencies, or you can go right into the high efficiency, right? So we can really narrow down, you know, a lot of things. If it's cost driving it, if it's efficiency driving it, if it's footprint, it's, all these things we can navigate to come up with the best solution for you when we have a separate heater, separate tank. Diversity and storage, okay? We can do large BTU with a small tank, okay? We have that tank for the little buffer where you have, um, you know, people washing hands every now and then, but then, you know, in the morning you have this huge shower load or whatever the case is. Um, so we can kind of do it for that. We have pre-configured storage tanks, right? We have these set dimensional tanks where we know this is very common, a 200, a 300, a 400, you know, a 940, you know, whatever the case is, we have these pre-configured. We have things like indirect. And that's another thing that we kind of, I wouldn't use the word forget about, but it's another separate heater, separate storage tank ability. So if you have very, very hard water, an indirect storage tank or a storage tank with a, a heat exchanger in it, a generator, could be a very viable option, right? Because now I'm not direct firing the hard water. I'm using a closed loop system to indirectly heat potable hot water. So I'm not doing a direct fire. You don't get all the scale buildup, all that other, you know, inherent potential that you come with a direct fired unit, okay? So when we look at tanks, it could be a closed loop with an indirect square storage tanks, Okay, <laughs> whoever thought of a square storage tank? Well, what's nice about a square storage tank is they can offer some structural viability, right? Some structural inherency with them, and you can stack heaters on top of them, right? You can reduce your floor space, okay? Um, custom size, no, you know what? That 200 is too small, the 300 is too big. I need a 266 gallon tank, no problem. It's gonna cost twice as much as the 300 gallon that I build every day, but if that's what you want, you can have it, okay? And then again, the custom tank with the heat exchanger or a, or a hot water generator, they call it, okay? The hot water generator, what's a little bit different in terms of you know, how we classify it, hot water generator versus indirect. Indirect tend to be your like assembly line, 
right? You got a 40, a 50, a 60, an 80, and a 120 gallon tanks. Very, very cut and dry, very, very similar. They put a steel, well, it could be a stainless steel, it could be a copper, it could be any mix of um, materials as the coil inside of the tank. But the end of the, uh, the end of the day, the idea is that they're kind of run of the mill, inventoried, really driven for homes, okay? When we get into hot water generator, it's now the custom. Okay, I need a 300 gallon tank and I need a heat exchanger, a two bundle that can give me 500,000 BTUs, right? Or no, I need that 300 gallon tank, but I need to have a heat exchanger for a million BTUs. So we can really customize that package for uh, your application. So again, just a ton, ton of diversity. <clears throat> um, part of my role over the years or part of my even... I guess, desire, personal desires. I'm a hands-on. I love working in the field. Um, I have a question. Did you have a question? Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were pointing at me. You had a question. Okay. Okay. So um, I spend a lot of time in the field. And what that time in the field allows me is to look at things, right? So maybe as an engineer or an equipment vendor or something, you look at something one way or you promote something one way, you talk about doing it one way, but by the time it gets to the field, somebody had like this really creative artistic moment and decided to do it completely different, right? And I like to um, basically just, I threw these up here because as simple as it should be, you go into a heater, into a tank, from the tank to the heater, it can be very, very magical at times on job sites. This particular drawing is a very simple drawing, a very simple application where I have a heater and a tank. And in this scenario, which is very, very common, I have a, a mixing valve, okay? Um, so if I look at this here, I have a hot water supply coming out of a three-way. Why do I have that three-way there? What is that called? An anti-scald, right? Because I may want to store my tank hotter to a kill bacteria, legionnaires, whatever you wanna call it. I may wanna run my tank hotter to give me more usable water because if I store it hotter and blend it down further, I can take more cold water and use less hot water, okay? Um, and at the end of the day, it's an anti scald device. If for some reason the heater goes haywire and it can't read the tank temp right, and I had it set for 125 so that I didn't like permanently burn anyone, but the sensor went bad and it ran up to 150, I'm protected with the three-way. <clears throat> If we look at this diagram, and this is where it's been a challenge for me doing virtual because I'm always so used to engaging the audience and asking questions, it's a little bit different. This heater or this piping arrangement here is actually a piping arrangement for a condensing high efficiency water heater with a separate storage tank. How do I know that? What would make it different if it was a non-condensing heater? And the answer lies in the cold water makeup, okay? So on a high efficiency heater, that cold water makeup coming into the building, I want it to hit the heater first. So I want the coldest water going to the heater first. Why do I want the coldest heater going to the, or excuse me, the coldest water going to the heater first? Because that's where my efficiency is, right? The colder the water going into that heater, the greater thermal efficiency there is. In a traditional standard efficiency or anything less than condensing, this incoming cold water line gets moved down here to the line going from the heater to the tank. Why do I do that? To protect the heater from temperatures below, you know, 140 or 130 degrees. The idea is that I'm gonna take that cold water, put it into the tank, let it blend so I don't shock that heater and make that heater condense. Not a thermal shock, but from condensing, okay? So again, at the end of the idea, at the end of the day, the idea is that it's a very simple piping. You kind of go in and out of the tank and you put your cold water in with a high efficiency application going into the heater first. In a non-high efficiency or anything less than 88%, we would want to move that cold water line going to the tank first. Again, with diversity, we can have multiple heaters, multiple tanks. Well, what does that mean? That means <laughs> I have two heaters, two pumps. Oh, again, learning curve. Two heaters, two pumps, but I interconnect the piping here. My cold water still comes into the same location between the heater and the tank in a high efficiency. 
I'm coming, the cold water is going into the heater first. Uh, in a standard efficiency, it would be flip-flop and we'd have that cold line going into the tank first. Why do we do piping diagrams in a seminar like this? Because again, people can be very artistic, okay? Two heater, two tank. I know it's redundant, but again, at the end of the day, it's still just single heater, single tank times two. So the piping stays the same, right? Out of the heater, into the tank, from the tank, into the heater. Our cold water line still gets brought in going into the heater versus coming out of the heater. These are the reasons um, we really suggest, encourage, looking at a manual before installation, okay? We see times where maybe it was drawn to be this way or it was requested to be this way or whatever. Maybe this piece of equipment was specified and they went with this piece of equipment or maybe this piece of equipment was in here before and we're retrofitting it into something different. You have to really look at what your current equipment that you're putting in requires or what you purchased requires versus what was there or maybe what was, was drawn, okay? Um, that's why I went over these piping diagrams because they're not overly complicated, but they're easily confused or, or done incorrectly. <clears throat> when to use separate heater tank configurations. In my opinion, as often as you can, okay? That's my opinion. The reason for that, diversity, 100% flexibility, okay? You also have more serviceable components. People have gotten relatively numb to, oh, my high efficiency tank type water heater uh, died, I gotta throw it away and put a new one in. And they just kind of get numb to that's every five years or every seven years or whatever this application does. When you have a separate heater, separate tank, I don't have to throw the whole system away, okay? If a heat exchanger went bad, right? Somebody didn't pay attention to the water softener and I scaled up a heat exchanger, I can replace just a heat exchanger if I want. I could replace the whole unit if I want, okay? If, um, you know, a burner went bad or something along those lines, I don't have to replace the whole unit, I can replace the burner. So much more flexibility, much more serviceability, um, so on and so forth, okay? Applications where dump loads are present, again, I can have a huge storage tank, very little BTU, right? If I've got 20 hours to get the tank up to temp, but then I only need that tank for an hour because I got this massive rush, I can, I can separate my load. When water quality is marginal, the reason I bring that up is when you have a separate heater, separate tank, that pump is always designed, or the intention is that the pump going from the heater, from the tank to the heater is designed in such a way that we're running maximum velocity through that heat exchanger. As we run maximum velocity through that heat exchanger, we create a turbulent scrubbing type effect, okay? So it doesn't allow that scale and impurities to build up on the heat exchanger because we're always rushing through there, scouring the heat exchanger. So not to tell you you can run hard water through it, but the idea is that if you have marginal water or a short period of time where the softener got bad or whatever, those heater tank combinations can oftentimes combat that by using velocity as their friend, okay? And then obviously when footprint allows. When to be cautious? <laughs> the list is short because really outside of footprint, there's no other reason, okay? If you wanna look at cost, maybe that's another reason, but at the end of the day, if you look at total cost versus today's cost, you'll always be benefit of a separate heater, separate tank.